So the absolute legend, PokeAMMD, challenged me to a Wi-Fi battle in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This dude is definitely one of the best Wi-Fi battlers in the game. He creates super high-level content over on his YouTube channel. I can easily say that he's one of the creators that I've looked up to the most throughout the years, which is why it's extra special we got ourselves a match today. Listen, if you've been living under like a rock for the past 10 years and somehow aren't already subscribed to Joey, definitely check out his channel. His link is in the description. I can't recommend this dude enough if you're into competitive Pokemon at all. But today we've got ourselves a nice little underused match, meaning it's not going to be full of Pokemon that are always seen, and you're going to be a little bit creative here. So, my guy's definitely bringing some pretty scary mons. There's also some stuff that I'm not really sure what they're going to do. Let's go ahead and just jump right into the match. Alright, so he's going to start off by slicing off his Slowking's legs right into the ground, looking like we're just bypassing Slowpoke tails these days. Slowking knees are on the menu, as I decide to lead off with the big Chungus Fungus. Now, we probably both expected Dawnfan lead, seeing as we're both carrying Dawnfan for our Stealth Rocker. Uh, I decide to go with the big Fungus just because I know that he also doesn't have anything on his team that wants to take a Spore. Uh, so I decided to just go for that turn one. I'm worried about an Ice Beam. Turns out he's actually just going to go right for the... The future sight, which is fine by me, this allows me to go ahead and go right for the spore. Unfortunately, this thing's ability, Mycelium Might, makes it so you can guarantee getting spores up with 100% accuracy, although you do always go last in priority. So, uh, kind of unfortunate, of course, since I'm faster. But I go for the Earth Power here. Now, I'm thinking maybe he switches into Gengar or potentially like Tinkerton, something that can come in, have a better matchup against the Toad Scroll. But he actually just stays in, burns a turn of sleep. My dude taking a nice little nap out here. And now I'm thinking, you know, I should probably conserve this Toad. I really do not want to risk losing this thing early. I know I'm not going to be able to do too much damage to Slowking with his bulky ass over here. So I decide, you know, who can deal with bulky stuff with a big ass mallet is the boy Tooth Fairy. Ready to come in, bash some teeth in, and just add to the old collection. Uh, I do actually take the future side attack. That's why I did want to switch into this thing. I can take that nicely, and I don't really care about that damage too much. So... I now decide to go for the knockoff. I'm not expecting him to want to stay in here, but I figure a knockoff is just going to be good utility and kind of whatever he wants to bring in. So he actually ends up switching into Donphan, which if there's anything on his team that does want to get bonked by my hammer, it's probably this thing. If it's full, you know, HP invested, it's likely going to take like 40% from it. So I get the knockoff there, which is super nice. It also breaks that thing sturdy, which is great. And now I'm thinking, you know what, I'm going to bring back out old Crazy Legs. There's no reason not to go right back uh, into my Fungus Boy. Um, I obviously can't put anything else to sleep, but what I can do is pressure with the nice little Giga Drain there. He has some switches into the Toad Scroll, um, but if I can make some plays with this thing, I can get some shit going. So, he goes for the knockoff in return. We're just out here, just there's items all over the fucking field, just a damn hazard out here. And now I'm just going to go right for a Giga Drain. As he actually ends up bringing in the Slow King, he's about to find out uh, that Big Fungus is definitely not the general <laughs> Toad Scroll you're going to see. Uh, this is actually max special attack, max HP invested. Modest nature, I'm able to do a whole bunch of damage uh, with that Giga Drain. He was probably expecting way less damage from that. Um, so the, Slowking generally is a decent switch into this because they are, like I said, more defensive most of the time. But not the big fungus. So I am able to get the benefit of unexpected damage there as now he realizes he is going to have to switch out the Slowking. Of course, with that thing's regenerator ability, it's kind of a dick and is just going to get a whole bunch more health. But... Uh, now he decides to go into the Salamence. Now this thing can come in on a Giga Drain easily, of course, and I find myself in a situation against this fat-ass dragon where I do not want to get set up on, and uh, I know a Dragon Dance is probably likely. I'm also always thinking of the, you know, the consideration of like a, a Terra in the back pocket if he wants to change types. Uh, I actually just decide to stay in. I'm going to go for the Sludge Bomb. I figure I'd rather get some damage off on that thing. I know that I actually have the Focus Sash Rever Room in the back, so if I could get some chip on that thing, I know that I could get it to the point... Uh, where like an iron head could knock it out and I don't have to worry about getting swept. So he actually goes back into Slow King. This thing is switching around all crazy, but I'm thinking I'm just going to stay in here with the big fungus. I have a pretty great matchup against his team. Uh, so I just get a nice little Giga Drain off there, puts him in red, and I'm really hoping that I could take care of this because with this thing switching around so much, it would be extremely nice if I could just limit, limit that with that regenerator. So uh, he does actually wake up from his nap. He goes for the nice little surf. Of course, I am able to eat that up. And now I'm thinking, okay, he's definitely not going to leave this thing in here. And I'm thinking he's going to try to bring in something different. I decide to go for the Earth Power, expecting either Gengar or Tinkaton. He is, in fact, going to switch into Gengar here, which is absolutely amazing. And like I mentioned earlier, Gengar generally switches into an Earth Power from a Toad Scroll, unless you're modest with max special attack investment. So that is actually able to take care of the Gengar. So that is extremely nice. That is a huge threat out of the way. It's also... You know, one of the things that threatens the Toad Scroll the most. So being able to take care of Gengar is amazing. Uh, and luckily the prediction pays off for me there. So 
Now he goes into the Tinkaton. I do want to conserve Fungus, of course. I can now put something else to sleep. And I'm thinking I'm just going to go right into the absolute goat, the Orange Peel, uh, who I know can take a Gigaton Hammer, plus then he's going to have to go for something like a knockoff. Of course, Gigaton Hammer gets some big old damage, nearly half, uh, but you cannot go for it twice in a row. So this puts me in a position where either I can try to go for an Earthquake, or I could potentially set up my Stealth Rock. I would like the Rocks up. Uh, just to break potential sashes or just kind of try to limit switches as much as possible here So he does stay in goes for a knockoff there gets rid of my leftovers uh, Which is fine. We only got we only got one bite of that apple But I guess it's just on the ground now, which is um, impossible to eat if it's on the ground Dom fan probably wishes he could five second rule that shit But I don't really have much that wants to switch into Tinkaton here as I decide to try to go for the earthquake He actually is gonna end up going for the encore so uh, he liked me using Stealth Rock so much, he gets to see it twice. Of course, that is going to fail. Encore Tinkerton is actually a super sick set. It's actually interesting, we're both running with some different hammers here. I decided to bring mine in. I'm like, you want to compare hammers, bro? But he does not, uh, unfortunately, as he's actually going to end up switching into Slow King. So, Tinkerton coming in on this isn't actually horrible. Slow King is down to half, and I can get a nice, strong knockoff on this thing if possible. Um, I would like to start setting up Swords Dances, but this team is built around kind of the Kilowattro being able to set up Tailwind. And um, Tinkaton in a Tailwind is an absolute beast and should, that should not be messed around with. Uh, so I decided to go for the knockoff here. He is going to end up switching right back into the Dawn Fan. Uh, so what actually is good about this is I've got enough chip on this thing to where after I knock off a Gigaton Hammer should be able to knock it out. I suppose unless it's like max HP and defense, but it's a risk I'm willing to take. He's probably going to try to get a rapid spin off. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go right for the hammer, absolutely squish his ass like a bug, and Don Fan is gonna go down here. So that is amazing for two reasons. First reason, he's not gonna be able to get up Stealth Rock of his own. So Mons that I have in the back are gonna be su in super great shape, especially the Reverum who has the Focus Ash intact, and also he cannot rapid spin my rocks away. So, he brings in the Salamence, I'm thinking, yay, Stealth Rock damage. However, his fat ass does not take any goddamn damage, because he's actually heavy duty boots. Uh, so that is scary. So. He comes in. I'm going to end up going right for the knockoff here. I am faster. I know that I can get some damage off. Would have been great to get a hammer there. Uh, however, of course, you can't use it twice in a row. So I'm going to have to do with the knockoff. I just want some chip on this thing. As now an Earthquake is going to be able to take care of the Tinkaton. But uh, I've put some good pressure on the team. Tinkaton's time was up. I figured I didn't really have an easy switch into this thing. Uh, so now I can kind of assess the situation a little bit easier. And I'm going to go right into young Walmart brand Zapdos. Now I have the option of setting up a Tailwind here. Uh, however, I'm just going to end up going right for the Thunderbolt. I'm thinking potentially I grab a kill here. I'm really actually wishing that I was Life Orb. I put Heavy Duty Boots on this thing kind of last minute, and as you'll see, the Thunderbolt is not going to be enough to take care of the Salamence, but I do actually end up getting a Para, which that is extremely unfortunate because as you'll see, he does go for the Dragon Dance here. Uh, that would put him faster because... At plus one, he does outspeed me, and I'm actually thinking he probably would go for something like a Roost uh, to be able to take the next Thunderbolt there. So, lucky para on my end for sure. Um, so, I'm able to then outspeed, go for another Thunderbolt, and luckily Crisis averted, not getting swept by Fatboy Dragon today. So, you hate to see it, or I guess you love to see it if your name is Zaptrace. So, now he gets a free switch into whatever he would like. He decides to go into Pama. Now listen, I have not played against this thing at all. But what I do know is that these things are generally going to be Choice Scarf. Uh, so he ends up going for the Ice Punch here. He outspeeds, of course, and I'm able to actually live, which is clutch. And this allows me to then toss up a Tailwind. So for the next four turns, my team about to be fast as hell, plus that activates my Wind Power. Um, so I'm going to end up going for the Air Slash, being able to outspeed, even though this thing is Choice Scarf behind the Tailwind. I figure a Slash would be super nice, but he does want to conserve that thing for later. And that thing actually becomes a problem. So yeah, so he ends up bringing in the Tinkaton here. Obviously, this thing can take an air slash like nobody's business, and I actually even just miss it. So, a little bit of karma coming, coming Kilowattril's way. Not as, definitely not worth the parahax on the Salamence, but that is fine. As now I'm thinking, okay, I either switch, something has to take a, a Gigaton Hammer here, or I go ahead and sack uh, the Kilowattril. I decided to just stay in. I'm going to go for a T-Bolt. I know I'm going to be able to get some pretty solid damage off on this thing. Uh, I do over half, which is amazing, and then in turn, he just goes for the knockoff and kills me. So... Uh, getting that chip damage off on this thing was super nice because now it puts it in range to where I know uh, Don Fan can easily kill. I have a, a bunch of different options, especially Tauros, um, and he is actually going to be leftover set. So now I get a free switch. I decide to go into the big fungus. Now the reason for that is because I know that I can outspeed behind the Tailwind, and then an Earth Power absolutely destroys this boy. And I'm trying to rack up the kills for the legend that is Toad Scroll. Um, he actually ends up going for a Terra here, which is extremely scary. So he's actually going to lose his Steel type. 
and he's gonna actually turn himself into water. So now he's actually no longer weak to the earth power. And a nice little defensive Terra on the Tinkaton there. That is extremely scary. Um, and earth power is not anymore gonna be enough to take it out, and that really sucks because now that means that, yeah, I just get absolutely smushed into a fucking pancake here, and Fungus is gonna go down. So. While I was able to do a whole bunch of work with Toad School, I'm proud of this boy, but it would have been great to <laughs> grab that kill there. He was well on his way to like a UAV or some type of kill streak, I don't know. But the game goes on, and at least I will be able to take care of the Tinkaton. So uh, the Tailwind goes away, and I have Mr. Choice Scarfed Bullseye in the back. I'm thinking I might have to use my Terra on this thing. Looking at the rest of the matchup, uh, I know that my Terra is going to come in handy, and I'm thinking I might need to use it here. Um, however, I go ahead and get that Intimidate. Of course, I'm going to outspeed because I'm Scarf, and I just decide to go for the Earthquake. Now, here's where I'm realizing I don't remember how much fucking health that Sloking has in the back, and I'm really hoping it comes in, takes some Stealth Rock, and then a couple EQs is going to be able to do it. Uh, but this guy is looking healthy as hell. This guy just came back from the Doctor looking full health over here as an Earthquake. is not nearly going to be able to do enough damage. Uh, so now I'm kind of in desperate mode here where I'm going to need to switch out the Tauros because, like I said, I'm going to be able to Terra that thing later and it's going to be probably my best option. Don Fan at below half health doesn't provide me really any value here. So he comes in, I get absolutely cowabunga on, but that is fine. That's what I needed to happen because this allows a free switch into uh, something else that can handle this. And I'm running out of options as I'm down to two Pokemon, but I decide to go into Young Optimus Prime. Sloking in this situation is definitely a Decepticon about to get his ass wiped off the planet. So I come in looking nice and shiny uh, and I decide I can go for a shift gear here. I am Focus Sash. I know that I can take an attack from this thing and I could potentially try to get the old motor going. So I now grab myself a plus two speed boost and a plus one attack boost and he goes for a yawn, which is not what I expected. And that puts a whole bunch of pressure on me to where I can no longer really... I stay in here. So the setup sweep does not happen here as now I have to switch my ass out and try to conserve Optimus for later. Um, what's unfortunate is if he decides to go for a surf here, Tauros has to come into a super effective attack, but I don't really have any options at this point in the game. So I bring back in Bullseye and I'm thinking, okay, now I, I guess I got to start getting some crystallization going as uh, I intimidate his ass for no reason. And he ends up switching out which is amazing. The Surf was very scary, but he actually ends up bringing uh, back in the Tinkaton. So that actually puts me in a pretty decent spot because I know that I can easily kill this thing, but being Choice Scarf, I now have to really think about what I want to lock myself into. Uh, and the main thing I'm worried about is that Sloking coming in after another set of Regenerator, that dude is going to be looking about healthy as hell, and I'm really wishing that I would have conserved my my two answers for it, which was the, uh, the Kilowattril plus uh, potentially Toad Squirrel. So here I decide to go for the Terra. I need to lock myself in uh, to the Terra Blast here. I can't go for anything non-stab and I really need to get as much damage as possible. So he goes back into Slowking, looking about as healthy as this man has ever been. But I do get the Terra here and I'm going to go full Fairy on his ass. So uh, the reason why I do this is because the Terra Blast with the Stab Fairy is going to be able to give me the most damage output. Plus, he's going to have to switch into one. And then I know now, being no longer a fighting fire type, I can take as many Surfs uh, as I want here. And hopefully be able to whittle this thing down. But as you're going to see, this boy absolutely takes nothing from that. Sloking is so incredibly defensive. And with that Regenerator, is a huge problem. So, uh, I just stay in. I go for another Terra Blast. I don't really have another option. I need to chip this thing to the point where uh, potentially Reverim can come in and be able to knock it out. So it's looking like after like one more, I'm gonna be in a pretty good position here. So he goes for the future site. It's actually the best option here because Surf isn't gonna be able to do a whole lot. Um, and he's now going to switch out to be able to activate that regenerator once again. I, my ass is being regenerated like no other today. And you just hate to see it. So uh, he goes into Tinkaton here. He does not quite die from the stealth rock damage. Uh, if you actually notice, there's three minutes left in the battle timer. The 20 minute battle timer is coming down to it. And it's looking like I've got a Tauros and a Dream here. So, Terror Blast does take care of the Tinkaton. We're both crystallized as shit out here uh, as he does go down. So now he's down to two Pokemon left. He has the Palmot and he has that Regenerator who's being an issue. Uh, so he decides to go into the Palmot here. And I know that this thing is Choice Scarf. I know that I'm Choice Scarf. And I honestly don't know speed tiers, but I'm thinking this thing's faster. He is, in fact, gonna be faster and goes for the move that I've been dreading since I saw this shit on his team preview. The Revival Blessing is gonna be able to revive a single Pokemon on his team at the cost of bringing it back at half health. So he goes ahead, he revives his Dawn fan. This is, 20, this is some 2022 Wi-Fi battling, boys. He just brought back a Pokemon in the middle of a Wi-Fi battle. My boys is out here using revives. So 
Luckily, at least, another Terror Blast is going to be able to take care of the Pawmot, and now I have to deal with not only the Slow King, but also a fucking zombie Dawn fan. This is the worst day of my life. I swear to God. This is the first time I've actually seen Revival Blessing in a Wi-Fi battle, and I could not have come at a worse time. So, he goes back into Slow King here. I'm thinking if I can get one more chip on this thing, potentially I could get Reverum to finish it off here. The battle ends in less than a minute, and it is coming down to it. Uh, so one more Terror Blast is not going to quite do enough to this thing. Luckily, though, after the uh, the Future Sight damage, a Surf does take care of me. And with the last 30 seconds, i got to see what Reverum can make happen here, boys. Keep in mind, the Donphan does only have half health over there. So I bring in the engine, and it is time to see if we can make it happen. I don't have any time for shenanigans. I have to kill the Slow King and kill a Donphan, and it's coming right down to it. So the Poison Jab here is luckily going to be able to take care of the Slow King. Finally satisfying as hell seeing Slow King go, go down, I swear. Uh, and yes, of course, his last Pokemon is going to be that Zombie Donphan at half health. So all I have to do here is knock it out with an Iron Head. Simple. He's, that's all I got to do. He's at ha less than half health with the Stealth Rock damage. I go for the Iron Head here. It is not quite going to be able to kill it. However, I get the flinch, which is absolutely insane. There's no longer any more time to finish off the match, and that is going to come down to the timer. So, the match is going to end in my favor, and that was a hell of a, of a finish. I swear to God, that was probably one of the better Wi-Fi battles I've had in this generation so far. But, one of the interesting notes, if he did not flinch there, he then goes for an Earthquake, right? Knocks me down to my Focus Sash, and then I outspeed and then go for another one and kill him. However, he actually has the Ice Shard on his Donphan, so if I don't get the flinch there... Uh, I likely then just die to an Ice Shard, and <laughs> the match is his. Uh, so the timer was on my side on that one, which you really hate to see. Uh, it's fucking 20-minute timer strikes again, boys. Uh, but regardless, it was still a really fun match. It was definitely exciting. Go check out my boy Joey's channel if you haven't already, and tell him I sent you, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.